Hello, friends, and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now, last time we were playing more Enigmatica 9. After a long break from playing this mod, I finally got the pack up and running again. So I first wanted to dive into Pneumaticraft, a new mod, relatively new mod, I guess, that I'd never played before and wanted to learn all of the ins and outs. So we set up a whole bunch of these machines, getting our pressure chamber set up, our air compressors, and our refinery for all of the oil that we've got. So that we have a source now of plastic, biofuel, all sorts of interesting things here. Some diesel, really neat fluids here in this refinery. Now, since we have all of these new ingredients, today's job is to make some better compressors than these very basic air compressors we still have. I really love to do liquid compressors. So let's dive in. Okay, so get to the next tier of manufacturing. We are gonna need an assembly controller. And assembly controllers require a bunch of stuff we have, compressed iron and pressure tubes, and things we don't, finished PCBs. Now, PCBs are made from a variety of different ingredients. We need transistors, which we can make with plastic that we've got in that tank. We also need capacitors, which again, we need plastic from what we've got in the tank, and some slime balls. We have to hunt those down. And then the last thing we need for this, for the PCB, is an unassembled PCB, which we can make in an etching tank the first time. So we're going to figure out how to do that. And we also need an empty PCB, which we make in a UV light box of some sort. So we add that. And to actually make those, we also make those in a pressure chamber. So we need all of these various ingredients here. So let's go ahead and make up a couple of things with the plastic that we have here. So this molten plastic, as I understand it, we literally just have to dump into the world and it should solidify. So I have a bucket of molten plastic and this is a negative two degree Fahrenheit heat sink. So in theory, yeah, there we go. It should cool down really quick next to that. Perfect. And I'm sure there's an automated way of doing this. I just haven't discovered it yet. Okay, there we go. Out of all of that, we got 12 plastic sheets. Now, how are we doing over here? Still have a bunch of oil processing. Still don't have, well, one bucket of diesel. That's good. Two buckets of kerosene. Two buckets of gasoline. And one and a half buckets of LPG. All said and done, we need six transistors. Let's start with that because we have all of the ingredients. So six transistors is six plastic sheets, six redstone dust, and 18 gold nuggets. Okay, there we go. Easy enough. Six transistors. Next up, we need six capacitors. Now for that, we're going to need six slime balls. So I'm going to have to come up with a source of slime balls pretty quick here. Oh, it looks like the pressure chamber actually gives us a really easy way to make it. We just need a green dye, which we can get from cactus, and a milk bucket. So we're going to have to find some cows, and then we're going to need some cactuses. So I'm going to get all that, and we'll be back here in a second. Huh. What are you? Cactum. I have no idea what these are supposed to be. They don't seem hostile. But at least I did find some cactus. So we're going to go ahead and take your cactus. And you know what? We're going to take a bit of sand so we can grow more cactus. Oh, is Snad in this? No, Snad is not in this. That is a shame. Snad is a great little mod that lets you grow cactus super fast. And that would have been wonderful to have. But unfortunately, we don't have that. Oh, there's wild flax. If I'd known it was in the desert, that would have been a lot easier. Okay. So we're just going to have to deal without Snad because growing fast cactus would be nice, but we don't have it. So let's head back and see if we can't find a bit more cactus out here. Well, I found a little bit more cactus, but I also found a lizard. Hey. Hey, guy. He's watching me. So cute how it walks. I wonder if we can adopt these. That one's real good looking. 
The salamander coloring? I like that. Yeah, we need to find out if we can make a, like a terrarium or something. That would be great. Okay, so most of our ingredients are now at hand. Do 12 gold nuggets, six plastic sheets. Oh, no, not plastic sheets. Milk bucket. And then we need our cactus green turned into green dye. There's four green dye. We might have got our ratios off. I don't know if this is going to work properly or not. Can we just take everything out of here anyway? There's our slime balls back. There we go. Okay, that's most of the capacitors we need, but we still need two more. So we're gonna have to go get a little bit more milk and the rest of that green dye. Now, unfortunately we don't have enough plastic to create our empty PCB yet. So we are gonna have to make some more molten plastic here, which we can get from only biodiesel. Is that the only recipe at this point? No, we can get it from LPG. That's right. Okay, good, good, good. So let's go ahead and do that since we have enough LPG to go on at this point. How much do we have here? Yeah, two buckets, plenty. So one bucket of LPG, and then let's go get a bunch of our charcoal that we have laying around. And this should work just right. Only this needs heat as well, right? So maybe we have to build another vortex tube? Is that how this is gonna work? Okay, so we went ahead and put our vortex tube down on the other side of the existing heat sink. I think this will just keep working for us. And now we're raising the temperature so that we can convert this. So where is that recipe? Coal LPG, 100 degrees. Oh, is this? only Minecraft coals? Yeah, this might be only regular coal. We might have to actually go coal mining for this. So that's somewhat problematic. Let's see if we can't come up with some coal real quick. Just want to check my pressure and make sure this isn't unreasonable for where we're at. This all looks good. That all looks good. Okay, let's go get some coal and we will come back. Okay, I only had one little teeny tiny crash of the entire game engine, but now we are back where we want to be. So let's go ahead and make up our plastic. Oh, this is going much quicker now. This is great. Okay, and so with that, we are just going to do the same thing that we were doing before taking it and dumping it into the real world and like so it should just spawn plastic this is perfect i guess if i was really smart i would put this over top of a hopper or something and again i'm sure there's some sort of way to do this with those dispensers and fluid tanks or with the fluid hoppers i'm sure there's some smarter way to do this all right, so now we have 10 more plastic sheets, which we should be able to use for our PCBs here. And again, we need to go about three steps back to get to a UV light box, to get to an empty PCB. So I assume we're gonna be needing a lot of these over time. So let's go get a bunch of gold nuggets. I assume we have enough here that we could do 30 gold nuggets, 10 plastic sheets, and 20 redstone torches. So let's do that real quick. All right, easy enough here. So 30 gold nuggets, 10 plastic sheets, 20 redstone torches. And you can see them being dropped in there right now. Okay, and there we have our 30 empty PCBs. Now at this point, I realized we're running out of space a little bit, so I did take down the house that was next to our setup here, 
And I went ahead and used the wool flooring to make our thermal lagging that goes on the side of the refinery. And that's just gonna help us keep it insulated nicely. That means that we're not gonna lose as much heat and this will heat up a lot faster, which means we're making our products a lot faster. So I think that was a good trade-off on both fronts. Now, the real trick here is figuring out what we want to do to power a liquid compressor if we make it. So we have these four different products that are coming out of our refinery. So we have diesel, we have kerosene, we have gasoline, and we have LPG. Now, any of these can be used to fuel the liquid compressor, but they all can each be made into the next higher tier of ingredient as well. So our gasoline, we're going to be using to make LPG potentially here. And our diesel, we use to make lubricant. So kerosene, although we can upgrade that to make it into our gasoline, maybe kerosene is the thing that we put into our liquid compressor. But of course we need to make our liquid compressor first. The other thing we need to do is make just a little bit of plastic so we can do some advanced tubes so this doesn't explode. And then the last thing I'd like to do is the security upgrade on those tubes so that it also doesn't explode. So basically avoiding exploding after the last episode where everything kept blowing up, that is our top priority. All right, so liquid compressor. This is easy enough. We have all of these things except for I don't know that I have that much leather. What's Airsat's leather? Oh, we need honeycomb for that, and I do not have honeycomb. So we're gonna have to find some hives or some leather to do this. Okay, we're back at our base and we have all of the leather that we need. Now, I'm not gonna say what I had to do to get that extra piece of leather, but suffice to say, I'm not comfortable with it. And I, this is why for most of the mod packs that I create, I usually place alternate recipes for anything that requires leather that you can use some sort of fabric out of hemp instead. That is my standard go-to rule. I do it in every mod pack I create, and I don't like when mod packs don't have an easier option. Now, I know there is the alternate leather option in this one, but it also requires bees and therefore honeycomb. That's somewhat problematic as well, so we're just not going to go there, but a simpler recipe would be great. Similarly, the biodiesel recipe in this game, it's also really frustrating. But anyway, I digress. We are in the business of making a compressor. So the one thing I am missing is picking my old compressor up off of the old build, like so. And hopefully this hasn't exploded on me. No, because it's run out of charcoal. That's fine. So we're going to take this compressor and use it to make our brand new liquid compressor like so great making some upgrades okay now let's go drop this back over here is that the way that goes yeah it seems to be connected up and what this needs is fuel and for now we're just going to use kerosene in here so here is my kerosene tank i think i think this is kerosene yeah and that is a lot of kerosene so we're going to grab this small fluid tank, use it to drain the kerosene out of there, and then insert it into here. And this holds 1600 millibuckets, so that should be plenty. Should be always on. What else is it missing? No problems. In theory, this should just be working. And yeah, we can see the little smoke particles coming off of it. So that should be doing the trick. 2.03. Wait, why is the pressure going down? Pressure should be going up. 2.02. It continues to go down. That's, uh, that's not ideal. Does that just mean that this is working extra hard? Well, I don't know what's going on there. Well, no matter. Now, what we really need to do here is make sure that our various setups like our thermoneumatic processing plant and our fluid mixer are still set up and ready to go. So let's put these down here. And this one we're now going to use to make plastic using the other recipe. So this is the biodiesel recipe that we had been using. We're going to move to LPG with coal to make plastic here. So we have 
lots of coal. We dug up a bunch a little while ago. And now we just need to take our fluid tank and get our LPG, liquid petroleum gas, for those of y'all in the know, and dump it into the processing plant. So we put that in there and we add coal to it. And in theory, the temperature will eventually rise here. Oh, but we haven't hooked everything back up. So let's just hook this back up. There we go. Temperature's going up already. And we should start getting plastic. There we go. Now, what are we gonna do with all this molten plastic you may be asking yourself? Well, the simple answer to that is I'm gonna use that to make the first set of our advanced pressure tubes. We are in dire need of pressure tube upgrades so that we can handle more pressure. And this is where we are going to do that. So to that end, I'm gonna drain the rest of the LPG back out. So we're gonna take that coal away and we're gonna take our fluid tank here first and foremost and grab plastic back out of it. So that should be zero plastic and we have all the plastic here. Now we move the LPG to the output tank the plastic to the input tank. Basically, we just shuffle those around is what we're doing. Great. And now we use that molten plastic in this same machine to make our advanced pipes, which we just use our regular pressure tubes and stick them in here and we get the reinforced pressure tubes out. So let's see how many we can make. Yeah, that's doing the trick. Look at it go. Oh, we're going to have way too much plastic, though. Well, that's fine. We can dump this back out and make plastic sheets out of it, I think. Let's see here. Yeah, we've made plastic sheets before. You just dump it into the street and it just cools down real quick. I wonder if there's a better way to make plastic sheets, though. Heat frame cooling. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's the way to do it. So heat frame chilling is this weird thing that you can do in Pneumaticraft where you take a chest and you put what we call a heat frame on it. And if you lower the temperature enough, you can actually turn items that are in tanks like this into a solid form. They just seem to pop out. So let's go ahead and try this real quick. I've never done this before. I only read about it in the manual. Let's make a chest, regular chest, just to be safe. Let's put our extra LPG back in the top of this thing. And here where we've got this heat sink, we're gonna pull this out, put down a chest and put on our, I was gonna try and put down our heat frame on it. There we go. Now that's chilling real good. So let's see here. We've got all of these reinforced pressure tubes now. Let's see how this works. We're going to take our plastic. Let's export that again, put it into the empty slot. We can then pick it up. And in theory, if we put this fluid tank, whoa, yeah, in here, it immediately is going to start turning that into plastic sheeting. That's happening so quick. Oh, I like that. And so that's just going to use all of our excess cold air off of our vortex tubes because we're heating everything next to them. And that's going to put in here and give us plastic sheets. Oh, that's so effective. I really like that. Now, the benefit to these is these can handle twice the pressure. Regular pressure tubes only handle five bars. These handle 10 bars. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade our system immediately. Even though we're going to lose a little pressure in the process, that is worth it to me. There we go. Just to get it to the point where we don't have to worry about it exploding. Well, that about brings us to a close. Thanks again for watching another explosive episode of Enterprise Architecture, and we'll see you back here next time.
Bye, friends. <laughs>